Right, welcome back to my channel, Do More. As, um, as many of you know, Do More is a channel that is dedicated to um, the business world, entrepreneurship, investing wisely, and uh, making the most of your life um, on, the, on this earth. Okay, So I'm going to start this little segment called Life in Five, which is a very small, bite-sized segment where I talk to people for no more than five or ten minutes about something which relates to this channel and which, of course, uh, interests me. So today I talked to this guy called Philip C, um, a very accomplished corporate person that has uh, had very fruitful and rewarding stints with uh, companies like McKinsey, uh, Pamandu, uh, and Malaysia Airlines in Malaysia, of course. And he's currently also the chief executive of Firefly, which is a domestic airline in Malaysia, and um, which has done amazing things uh, in terms of connecting the dots within the country. He also incidentally is on air in radio with, with me and uh, I've got the privilege of spending uh, our, our daily shows together and um, this is my conversation with him. What's it been like being uh, on radio broadcast? What have you learned from it, Phil? Oh, it's exhilarating. I love it. I'm learning so much. I mean, what you cover is incredible from politics, economics, society, it's incredible. But what I've learned a lot is that it's a performance. You really have to give your best and all in. You can't just be yourself fully. So I realized the biggest challenge is how do you mix your personal and the need to perform on air? And so one of the things I do is because I've always worked in industries and I'm very focused in what I do, in here is so much breadth. You're jumping between topics so fast, seamlessly. It's just like you need to catch a breath um, every time you end after a two and a half, three hour show. It's intense, right? You're just moving from topic. You can be talking about vaccination one time, then you're talking about GDP numbers, and then you're moving into the US. It's just incredible the breadth you do. So one of the things I've learned also is that you need to do your research so that when you actually come on air, you are well informed, you know what you're talking about, and you're ready to inform and guide our listeners. Do you think that for people who have spent a lot of time in the corporate world and they are getting a little bit, you know, I guess jaded, um, you would recommend a switch to a more creative pursuit? I mean, this is quite creative, right? Yes, I recommend that everyone should have a creative pursuit, regardless of whether you are jaded or not. It's just a great way for you to escape sometimes being down a rabbit hole and being deeper and going deep in a specific area. It's always good to have breadth, I feel. And creativity does that. It helps you, it energizes you, it helps, look, it helps you look at things in a different way as well. Was it a big jump for you? It was. I found it challenging at the beginning. And that's why even before I was on air, I actually was uh, listening and yes, you know, Trang, I was on air observing you guys for two months because I also wasn't sure whether I could do it. And it required a bit of prep work and observation beforehand. Yeah, so I guess in the car, you're thinking, oh, can I do that kind of thing? Or what would it take? Am I the kind of guy that does it, can do it? So was it a, so a lot of people, they don't muster up the courage to take the plunge, right? There's another side of people or another group of people who think, yeah, it's easy, it's easy peasy, I could do it as well. But I was in that earlier group you mentioned, Chuang, which is, oh, this is a really daunting and difficult task. But what you don't know is, is that there's a huge team behind you that's doing the work, the research that actually are intended to help you make and sound look good as well. So what are your top tips for like, um, you know, people who want to make it in the corporate world, right? I mean, you spend some time in the corporate world yeah. now. You work for GLCs and what have you. Yeah. What are your top tips for them? Top three tips. I think you've got to mix your passion, your skill, and your ability to contribute all together nicely. You must find tasks that have the mixture of all these three very well. So what you're passionate about what you're skillful to do, and whether your work does value add to your different stakeholders. If you just are focused in doing those tasks that gives you these three combo nicely, I think you do well. Okay, that's tip one. Tip two? Tip two, work very hard. <laughs> no, no escape for that, right? There's no escape for that. You just really have to put your head down, get work done. And I think if you don't get recognized, that's fine. Eventually, people are recognized and you move along to it. Number three, le? Number three, I feel is... Um, never lose sight about the bigger picture, uh, your family, your friends, because they're all interconnected. The support system you have, the friends you have, they're going to help you and give you energy when you're out of work as well. And that will translate into your work. 
Okay, so so the, that advice is is interesting for like a twenty five year old or thirty yeah. year old person, right? So that advice might not apply if you're like forty, forty five, right? At a bit of a crossroads, maybe kind of like maybe midlife crisis, maybe. What would you say to those people? I think I think the advice is applicable to all ages. It's just that it's harder to accept it when you're forty, because I guess it's this expectation that at forty you had hit a certain performance or hit a certain level. Maybe you feel frustrated you can't. I, I suspect there are only two ways of doing it. Either you double down or you calibrate your own expectations. Okay, but the right. power is in your hand. Fantastic, Phil. Hey, thank you, dude. No problem. Cheers.